Hello, I'm Terry Marr. Today we're going to talk about becoming one with the Father on His alone. Today we want to start off by reading a scripture. Let's look at Isaiah 55 and 8. That's in the Old Testament, Isaiah 55, starting with verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, this are the words, these are the words of Isaiah. He was a prophet of the Lord. And I've heard many of us preach as uh, to our church members the importance of knowing that our thoughts are so different from God's. But even though it was written years and years ago that that was the case, I'm a strong believer that that is to eventually change. God wants us to have His thoughts. He wants us to have His ways. Why would I say that? Look at what Jesus says when He prayed in the 17th chapter of John. He says, Lord, I pray that you make them one with us. He said, make them one. As you, Father, and I are one, allow them, who are they? The disciples, the body of Christ, allow us to be one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the body of Christ, all of us, one. And in order to do that, we've got to know the ways of God. We have to know the thoughts of God. After everything that Paul had said in the New Testament, after everything he had done, all the miracles he had performed, all the people that he had witnessed to and preached to, when it came towards his time to die on the earth, he said that I might know you and the power of your resurrection, the fellowship of your suffering. Paul wanted to know God. In other words, he was saying, I need to know your ways. I've seen your acts, but I need to know your ways. I need to know your heart. I need to know you. God wants us to know him. Even Moses in the Old Testament. Moses got to the point that after he had uh, delivered the children by the help of God, God had walked with them and instructed him how to bring the children out of Egypt and through the wilderness. And then Moses said to him one day, Lord, show me your ways. I've got to know your ways. There is a point in every Christian's life where we want to know the thoughts of God. We have to want to know the ways of God so we can please Him. If we look in the book of Revelations, the fourth chapter, starting at verse 1, John the Revelator says he was talking, he was in heaven, and God was showing him all these things, and an angel came to him and said, Come up hither, and I will show you things that must be hereafter. Think about what I just said. The angel tells John, it is time for you, John, to come up hither. When you think of praying to God, do you always expect Him to come where you are? When you're at your home and you're in your prayer closet, do you expect Him to come from eternity and come see about you while you're praying to Him? When we first start off, that's, that's all right, because we're novice. But there comes a time of maturity in Christ, where when we want to speak to God, we have to learn it is time to come up hither. It's time to go where He is. It's time to see things from God's perspective. It's time to hear the voice of God from His throne. Come up hither, says the angel, and I will show you things that must be hereafter. 
I hear God telling us, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. What are we supposed to hear? What the Spirit is saying to the church. The Spirit is talking to us and those of us who have an ear to hear, we have to be able to go up, hear what it is that's being said so we can deliver it to the churches. In Luke 11 and 1, the disciples noticed that Jesus would always go off to a quiet place and talk to the Father. They also knew that John had taught his disciples how to pray. So in Luke 11 and 1, and it came to pass that as Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he had ceased or when he had finished, one of Jesus' disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us how to pray. As John also taught his disciples. And this is what Jesus says. This is the prayer that we learn as a child. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This is the way Jesus says we're to start the prayer off. First, we acknowledge the Father, acknowledge who He is. And then we ask that, Lord, your kingdom come and that your will be done. And then it breaks off and it says, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted unto us. This is the way Luke writes. Uh, this is Luke, I think it is. Luke writes it this way, okay. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now the one that we probably learned was, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. It's different ways in the different Gospels. But it says the same thing. It lets us know that this is how Jesus told his disciples to pray. But there comes a time, this is the beginning of their prayer relationship with the Father. But as we continue with God, things change. In my own life, I've noticed that the gifts that God has given me, the way they present themselves to me and the way I minister them to the congregation, they've changed over the years. Even the heavenly language from the Holy Spirit that he's given me, it's changed over the years. I mean, in the length of time that I've been uh, saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, the tongues have changed at least five or six times in that length of time. Maybe some of you can relate to that. Even the way I prophesy has changed over time. Even the way I teach has changed over time. And each time they change, I find myself having to trust God more because I find myself in unfamiliar territory. But that's deliberate. God wants us to get to the point that there is nothing that will distract us to the point that we can't hear His voice over all the other distractions. So even if the gifts seem, though the word never changes, the way that they're administered by us through the Holy Spirit, they will change. That administration may change, but the word and the gift itself will never change. But as we go through these things, God is trying to teach us, don't get so comfortable that there, you think that there's only one way that I can do things. Well, the same comes with the relationship and how we talk to God in prayer. I want us to look at Psalms 91. And we've just looked at the prayer in Luke where uh, Jesus is teaching the disciples how to pray. But let's go to Psalms 91 because just like we were talking about how God wants our thoughts and our ways to change, there comes a time when we go up hither to where God is to talk to Him. We see things from a different perspective. We see things from a different vantage point. When you go up hither and talk to God, when you stand by Him for that 
uh, 91st Psalm says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. When you go up hither and you stand by God and you see from His vantage point, the way you pray changes. The things you say, they change. You speak with confidence. You don't go up there hoping. You go up there knowing. You go up there in confidence. Let's look at it. Go to Psalms 91. This is the New King James Version I'll be reading from. Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Now, when it talks about dwells, another way of saying that is he who waits there, who lives there. It's not a visit. It's a waiting there. It's an abiding there. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall become a fixture. It says he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When I looked at one of the other translations, it said it becomes a fixture. Can you imagine that? You go there and you're just part of the scenery because when you get there, you don't want to leave. Verse two says, but once I am under the shadow of the Almighty, I began to talk differently. And the first thing I say is I will say of the Lord. When I am standing by his, side, by his side, I'm not asking about anything for myself. The very first thing that happens when I'm abiding there is I begin to talk about my God. I will say of the Lord. Wow. When we come up hither, we stand by him. We no longer ask for things for ourselves. We speak the Father's words. We develop the Father's mind when we go to that secret place. We've got to take a break, but we'll be right back. As a Christian, you may be aware of the journey of life you must navigate through day by day. But as a son of God, are you aware of the Father who has ordered each step, making it specific to your needs and his expectations for your growth and success along the way? Through Terry Marr's new book, Searching the Depths of God, you will discover that every step is deliberate and necessary for you to become the answer to the problems of this planet. With each chapter of her book, you will discover your role in this epic adventure called life and strengthen your resolve to please the Father while recognizing He is so much greater, powerful, wiser, and transcendent than you could ever imagine. Call the number on your screen now or visit terrymarministries.org to get your copy of this amazing book today. Now back to His Alone with Terry Marr. Before the break, we were talking about the importance of knowing that we need to be able to go where God is. We need to be able to come up hither in order for him to show us things that must come hereafter. We talked about the first verse of Psalms 91, where it talks about he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. When we find ourselves going to where God is and praying in our closet to Him standing by His side, we find ourselves at a new vantage point. We can see things by His side that we can't see when we look at Him as being way in eternity and us all the way here on the earth. When we elevate our mindset to the point that He is with us, in Christ, we live and we move and we have our being. When we can get that picture in our minds, then the fact that our ways are so different and our thoughts are so different, it makes them all come together. Because once we are in the face of God and recognize that we are in Him and He is in us and we are one, which is the prayer Jesus prayed for us, that we may be one then when we pray, we say what the Father says. 
We know the Father's mind. We speak the Father's words. Look at verse 2. Once you're standing by his side and you're dwelling in the secret place, the psalmist says, I will now say of the Lord. Look at that. I'm not here. I'm praying, but I'm not praying for something regarding me. It's not a selfish prayer. It's a selfless prayer. It's the same kind of giving away that our Father does. I'm here to give myself to the people in need of me. And I speak as the body. I don't speak as an individual. I speak as the body. And because the body is one and we have one head and that head is Jesus, we are to move as one. We are to act as one. The Father's thoughts, the Father's ways, we are not to come up with our own agenda, but to move in the ways and thoughts of our Father. That's why when you're standing there by his side, verse 2 says, I will say, I will. Our Father is the I am. When we are standing by his side, we say what he says. I will say, Of who? The Lord, not of myself. I will say, he is my fortress and he is my refuge. He is my God. You see that? I'm speaking as the body. I'm not saying he's our God because we are one. I'm saying he is my God. In him, I will trust. In him. In him. This is a... We're speaking singular words. We are many, but we are one. In him, I, I will trust, for I'm now one with him. Verse three, surely, now this is the body speaking. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. We are encouraging those in the body. We're encouraging those who have not come to themselves yet. We are saying the words of the Father, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. We're letting people know we speak with confidence when we are in the face of the Father. When we dwell in the presence of the Most High God, it's not iffy. We're not holding our breath wondering. It's a definite. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Why? Because he can see it from where he is. We can now see what the Father sees. But still, in what we are saying, it's all by faith. Because we're not doing it actually there. We are on our knees by faith, speaking from the vantage point of the Lord. That's what God wants. He wants us to do everything we do by faith. We're standing by his side. We hear his words. We're doing his will, knowing that what he has declared, he said we could do this. He sent us to do just what we are doing. And because he sent us, it's going to work. It's not up to us to make it happen. It's up to us to believe that the Father did not make a mistake. Go to the next verse. He who is God shall cover you with his feathers. We are declaring this. We see from the vantage point of the Father and we're saying, don't worry about anything. The Father already has it planned. There he sees the traps and the snares of the evil one. He sees what's coming down the road. He sees what's around the corner. He sees your yesterdays, your todays, and your tomorrows all at the same time. He's not panicking. So why should you? When you minister from the side, standing by the side of the Father, when you are dwelling and abiding under his shadow, you speak with this confidence. You speak knowing. That his words, oh, they are everlasting. That his words will live forever. When everything else has passed away, his words will abide. Verse 4, 
He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. How do you know? Because now I am standing and I'm under his wings. His truth, his truth. Did you get that? His truth. Not the truth that that, uh, the world says, but his truth. That is the only real truth. His truth shall be your shield. His truth shall be your buckler. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is one with the Father. When we are in that place, standing by our God, standing by his side, for he told Moses, there is a place by me. And I will take you, Moses, and I will put you in that place and I will walk by you and I will shield you with my hand and I'll let you see my hinder parts. He told Moses, when you're ready, there's a place by me. He's telling us through this psalmist, when you're ready, there's a place by me. When you're ready to come up hither, when you're ready to see things from my perspective, come up hither and I will show you things that you can't see from where you are. God is so ready to take us where we need to go in order for us to speak with confidence. We can't afford to be hesitant when he says it's time to march. We can't afford to rethink this thing or second guess him. We've got to know his words. We've got to know his thoughts. We've got to know his ways. And we've got to be on point. Look at verse 5. You shall not be afraid. Now, this is he that dwelleth in the secret place. He's saying these things. That's the body of Christ. He shall not, we're telling them, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, people. You shall not be afraid. Did you see how confident you can be when you're standing by God's side? You say it with confidence. You could tell the body of Christ, don't be afraid. Chill out. It's going to be all right. We're standing by the Father. The Father's got this. Have you ever remembered when you were in school and you knew your big brother was in the classroom uh, in the next building? Like you were in uh, elementary and he was like in middle school or uh, whatever they call it now, junior high. If you were in that elementary school and there's a bully bothering you, As soon as it was time to go home, you would look for your big brother or your big sister. And as soon as they got by your side, that bully wouldn't bother you. Because they your brother or your sister was so much bigger and knew so much more and could take care of you. That same confidence that you felt then should be the confidence that you can feel when you are know that you are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, that you are covered under the wings of the Almighty, that you are one in the body and you are one with Christ. And what Jesus prayed that we would be one, that we would be sanctified through thy truth, thy word is truth, that the Holy Spirit is by our side leading and guiding us, then we are confident. We are confident. We know all things are working together for our good because we love the Lord. Let us look at, let's go all the way to the end here. It says a thousand, verse seven, a thousand shall fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come by you. It lets us know that no matter what's going on, we don't need to be afraid. There are things that will look like it's going to just overtake us. But our big brother, Jesus, is by our side. And our Father, our Creator, is holding our hand. What do we have to be afraid of? We have God. I know this is our time for prayer, but before I say a word of prayer, let me say this regarding once we are standing by the side of the Father and we come up hither to pray and to minister to Him and to the body. We talked about what we say while we're there. But if you look at this uh, prayer of the psalmist, Psalms 91, look at starting with verse 14. 
All of a sudden, the father opens his mouth. While you are standing by his side, remember there's a two-way communication in prayer. It's not us doing all the talking. The father has something to say. And this is a perfect example that right at the end, toward the end of this communication, the father opens his mouth. Look at verse 14. This is what God says. Because he, who is he? The one who has come and is now standing by me, has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. This is God speaking about us who are now abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. God says, I will set him on high because he now knows my name. Oh, wow. God says, he shall call upon me. This is verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Oh my God. This is God speaking to us in prayer while we are standing at the secret place. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Our Father says that. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Oh my goodness. When you get a chance, read that Psalm over and over again till you get it in your spirit. God, in the name of Jesus, as we get ready to close out this segment, I ask you, God, to help us to be willing to come up hither so we can hear your voice. We can speak to you, but when the time comes that we shut down and allow you to speak to us, speak, Lord. Let us know your will for our lives. Help us to be one with you. Help our thoughts and our ways to become your thoughts in your ways. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to trust you. Teach us how to know that you are God all by yourself. Amen. As a Christian, you may be aware of the journey of life you must navigate through day by day. But as a son of God, are you aware of the Father who has ordered each step, making it specific to your needs and his expectations for your growth and success along the way? Through Terry Marr's new book, Searching the Depths of God, you will discover that every step is deliberate and necessary for you to become the answer to the problems of this planet. With each chapter of her book, you will discover your role in this epic adventure called life and strengthen your resolve to please the Father while recognizing He is so much greater, powerful, wiser, and transcendent than you could ever imagine. Call the number on your screen now or visit terrymarministries.org to get your copy of this amazing book today.